shanks of Lift Like a Girl, and I'm going to teach you how to bench press. Now, before we get into that actual how-to of the movement, I just want to stress that safety is important, and you should take every precaution you can, especially if you train alone. If you bench press alone, you need to make sure you have a power rack like I'm using here. The purpose of this is so you can use safety bars. This way, just in case something happens, if you can't get the bar off your chest, the safety bars will catch it and you don't get injured. The other thing you want to do if you're bench pressing alone is don't put weight collars on the end of the bar to hold the plates in place. Again, that's just another safety precaution in case something happens. You can dump the plates off. You wouldn't be able to do that if they were held in place with the collar. So always take proper precautions. Accidents do happen. You want to make sure you're proactive and prevent those. Another good thing is to have a competent spotter if you do have one. Um, if, you, if you work out at a gym, make sure you have somebody that knows what they're doing so you can stay safe and still have a really good training session. So safety first always. And you're going to see here where I have these safety bars placed. You want them just you know about an inch or two lower than where the bar is when it's on your chest because you don't want the bar running into that and hitting it when you're trying to bench press. That would just get in the way and be really annoying. So what I'm going to show you how to do is bench press, and I'm also going to show you how these safety bars work. So the first thing you want to do is get in position, and foot placement is an important thing, but it's pretty individual. Some people like to have their feet set to where their shins are in a perpendicular angle to the ground. I prefer to have my feet pulled back a little more. It's just more comfortable for me to have my heels back. So play around with this and see what's comfortable for you. Maybe you like your feet a little further forward. Maybe you like them pulled back. I prefer them pulled back, but my feet are still planted on the floor completely. That's where I like to put them. The other important thing before I actually get down there, I'm going to instruct you to have your shoulder blades pulled back before you perform the movement. Now the purpose of that of pulling your shoulder blades back and together, you're going to do that and you're going to keep them locked there the entire time. That just helps you have a more stable base to press from. So when I'm laying back and I say pull your shoulder blades together and back, that's what I mean. You're just actively pulling your shoulder blades together and you're going to keep them nice and tight and bunched up the entire time when you perform this movement. So getting into position, from here what you're going to do is intentionally arch your upper back. Well, actually your lower back, excuse me. And I don't know if you can see, I don't pull my shirt up here, but I have, I can easily put my hand underneath here. So you want just a nice little arch. We're not going for anything crazy and excessive. We're not power lifting here. We just want a little bit of an arch. So you can intentionally think of driving your chest up to the ceiling a bit, a bit to get that nice arch. And then where my eyes are right here, they're pretty much directly under the bar. But some people find that they need their eyes a little under the bar, closer toward their feet. That way they don't hit the uprights when they bench. So just play with this a bit and see what's most comfortable. But for the most part, my eyes are under the barbell. So from here, we have our feet set on the ground. Again, you can play with the positioning to see what's most comfortable for you. I have an arch in my lower back by driving my chest up to the ceiling. And then what I'm doing now is I'm pulling my shoulder blades back and together. My shoulder blades are now pinched together. And that just gives you a nice stable base to press from. The next thing from here is setting your hand width and I go just a couple inches wider than shoulder width apart because that's what's most comfortable for me. Kind of what we're shooting for here is to have your forearms perpendicular to the ground when we're performing the movement. So generally an inch or two wider than shoulder width is a good starting position. And then wrap your hands and your thumb around the bar. Always, 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 this is another safety thing, have your thumb wrapped around the bar. That is an important safety cue. And then from here, when you're ready to bench press, push the bar up and then slowly bring it out to where the bar is directly over your shoulders. And notice the position of my wrists. They're, they're somewhat bent back, but they're not hyperextended. Do not do this. Do not let your wrists fold back, okay? Keep them fairly neutral. They'll be bent back just a little bit. But once you're in this position. My shoulder blades are pulled together. My chest is up. I have an arch in my back. My feet are set. And then from here, what I'm going to do is lower the bar 
to my lower chest. So as I lower down, you'll notice that my elbows tuck in a little to my sides and then drive back up. So what we're going for here is to lower the bar to your lower chest and your elbows are going to bend at about a 70 degree angle to your torso and then you drive straight back up. So you'll start with the bar over your shoulders but you lower it down to your lower chest and then drive back up. And then when you're done bench pressing, please don't complete a rep and then push it up and throw it into the rack. That's not safe. Perform your last rep and then guide that bar and tension the back into the rack. You want to do that because that bar is going over your face and you want to make sure that it gets back there and secure before you try to get up. So what I was saying, when you start the movement, the bar is out and, and it's locked over your shoulders, but you lower the bar down to your lower chest. And so that naturally makes your arms kind of come down at an angle because what some people do is they'll do this, lower the bar to their upper chest and you have this 90 degree angle. You don't want that because it's really hard on your shoulders. So when you intentionally bring the bar down to your lower chest, your arms will come down at about a 70-ish degree angle to your body. And that's just much easier on your shoulders. So that's how you perform a barbell bench press. Oh, I forgot to show you the safety bars. So getting back into position, this is what the safety bars are for. Push the bar up, guide it out correctly. And this is a good reason, this is one reason to have an arch in your back. So if I'm down here and I can't get this bar off, off me, all I have to do is take that arch out of my back and now the bar is resting on these safety bars and I'm okay. So that's another good purpose of the arch. It's just a good way to protect yourself. So always use safety precautions when bench pressing. Do it in a power rack. Have those safety bars set. Make sure your thumb is wrapped around the bar. Take that bar out of the rack with purpose, get in position, and remember your shoulder blades are pulled back and they stay there the entire time. Make sure that as you're doing your reps, they don't start coming apart. Really pay attention to having them pulled back and squeezed together the entire time. And have a little arch in your back, actively push your chest up and hold that arch there. The bar will be locked out over your shoulders, but you lower it to your lower chest and then drive back up. And when you're done, lock out the rep and then guide the weight back into the rack. This way you can train safely, train confidently, and that is how you perform a barbell bench press.